Hey, physics. Okay, I wanted to give you an overview of the assignments that we have due for um, for this unit, for this investigation. So we're looking at PowerSchool here, and we have three Google Forms, one for each day last week. Um, they also line up with like Activity 1, Activity 2, and Activity 3. Um, so if you haven't done those yet, you should do those. Um, I sent you an email with the link to them if you haven't done them yet. And also, if you'd like to redo them, that's fine. You actually are going to have time on Thursday morning to redo those if you'd like to. Um, you are welcome to get full points on them if you would like to. Um, and then we have the readings from Investigation 2, which I'm going to go into a little bit deeper in just a second. Um, you can attach those individually into this assignment in or in uh, Google Classroom or you can make me a doc that just has it's like a single page doc with just the four links there so I'll show you a little bit more how to do that in a second then we have the investigation two summary table which is what you watched a video of a minute ago maybe or maybe you will in a little bit um, but that sums up all of the experiments that we saw and did and the video that I made is 12 minutes long so it's pretty long but it talks you through each one and you can actually see bits of each one right there so it's a good like a really good refresher for you um, and then um, on Thursday or Friday afternoon you're gonna be taking the investigation to test which is in the form it's a Google form and it's gonna go through all the stuff that we did both um, in the stem resource and also in the readings so you're gonna get a good feel for um, just by reviewing the things that you're doing today and um, and reviewing those Google forms if you'd like to from last week you're gonna have a really good feel for what's coming up so um, I want to use the rest of this video to tell you how to do how to get the readings in there because I know a lot some people had some problems with it last week um, so when you go into classwork um, there's actually two things you can see here if you're looking for the investigation two summary that's in Wednesday and what you'll need to do to make it so you can work on that again is you'll have to unsubmit the assignment from Wednesday and what that does is it frees it up because when you submit it to me then Google Classroom thinks that I don't want you to change it anymore right <laughs> so you have to unsubmit it because I do want you to change it some more I want you to get it all filled in um, okay so then we have the three readings right we have how can charged objects Oops how can charged objects interact with, interact without touching and remember that you need to have one word phrase or sentence highlighted in each one of these paragraphs as well as questions answered I um, obviously it's best for you if you have the answers right here but if you but they're really just to have you thinking about stuff right so um, you will know that you get the concepts by doing all the other stuff that we're doing I just want you to, to give it a try here, highlight something, and um, put your answer in there. Okay, so the next activity was from Wednesday, or the next reading was from Wednesday. How do bees find flowers? So same thing here, you've got to highlight, answer questions. And then the other part of this one was that there was a drawing. So I actually made a drawing of this that you're going to add to. So how do pollen grains change the electric field of a flower? So you remember that pollen grains are negative, so I'm going to show you how to draw what I'm looking for here. So before the bee comes to the flower, there's some pollen on there, and there are negative charges because pollen has a negative charge, right? So we can see those negative charges, but the other important thing here is that we're drawing an electrical field around this flower because having that negatively charged pollen makes that flower negatively charged. So negatively charged fields are like the cookie monster, right? They want to take in and take in. So I'm going to draw some arrows and I'm just going to use my arrow tool right here to draw this inward facing um, electrical field. Okay, this is really a big important part of this lesson and I, I really didn't emphasize it enough when we were first going through it because I didn't realize how important this concept was, but this electrical field of this flower, inward pointing, is important. Okay, so then the B comes and that B is positively charged, right? And in fact, we better draw those positive charges around the B because bees have that hair on them and we know that when we rub things with fur, then that fur likes to... Um, it likes to give up that negative it likes to give up electrons so it's going to gain a positive charge so this B has a positive charge oops I don't want an arrow there I want a line there let's see 
line. Okay. Nope, not that. Hey, I want to do a line. There we go. Nope. It's tricky. Hold on a second. There we go. Oh, it's trying to connect to the B. That's what's going on. Okay, let me make this a little bit longer. Nope. I appreciate that learning how to do this stuff on the computer is like, it's hard. It's hard sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to draw my thing up here and then I'll just move it over closer to the B. So I can draw it like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and I can select that. Or I can say, copy, paste, copy, paste, and I'll just put a couple of these on here. So this B is positively charged and watch what I can do here. If I select this and I do control click, I can rotate it 90 degrees. So then it makes, oh, I actually didn't want to rotate that one. Gosh darn it. positively charged. And this one I can copy it and then I can rotate it. Rotate 90 degrees. There we go. And I'm going to copy that one. So now I have three positive charges by my bee. I've got negative charges around my flower. So then that bee comes and sits on the flower and all that pollen goes because it has that static electricity. It's just like a dryer sheet sticks to your clothes. It's just like you know, certain clothes stick together, right? Because of static electricity, that pollen is sticking to, the negatively charged pollen is sticking to the bee. So then after the bee leaves the flower, then the bee has more of a balanced charge there um, because it's got that negatively charged pollen that has stuck to it. And so it's balancing out the positive charge that it got from the air. So, um, so what you're gonna draw here is more of a neutral field. So I'll go ahead and say copy paste and move this over copy paste and this is just getting because remember all neutral charges are actually they're not like devoid of charges what they are is um, a balanced charge like balanced negative and positive charges right so let's draw one more because we want four okay so now I'm gonna and paste and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and then I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to put this over here so now I have a neutrally balanced flower um, and then I have this bee that is also neutrally balanced so let's see if I can select it this time I probably can't I'll just go ahead and copy and paste it again I'll just draw two positive charges here or two one positive and one negative I just copied and pasted that. Okay, so we have this new, uh, neutrally charged bee and a neutrally charged flower, okay? Um, great. Okay, so then the next, um, the next reading that you did was detecting oncoming thunderstorms and it connects um, this phenomenon of lightning that we know to this invention that Benjamin Franklin uh, is famous for, even though he didn't make it, which is the Franklin's Bells which make use of a lightning rod to ring these bells to let you know that a storm is coming, right? And also a lightning rod, what it does is it conducts the electricity away from, so it doesn't like set the house on fire. What it does is it conducts that electricity through the rod and into the ground. So it's not gonna set the house on fire. It's gonna just go through the ground and discharge, right? Like that hand by the Franklin's Bell's cans, right? The hand that comes in and then the, and the bells start ringing again because that charge is flowing through the hand. The lightning rod is pulling that charge and diffusing it into the ground, okay? So same thing here, you're gonna need to, um, you're gonna need to highlight a word or a phrase or a sentence in every paragraph and you're gonna answer the question at the end right here and you're going to write your answers for these here. Okay, now once you've got that done, then what you need to do is you can either 
you can either come into each one of these um, assignments here and unsubmit them and that will allow you to turn them all into the new assignment that I'm going to have this week called like submit readings here or something like that um, or you can make me one new Google Doc and just copy and paste the links on there for each one and I'll be able to access it that way too and then that might help with some of the accessibility issues I'm not sure but okay that's what you got to do thank you and I hope this helps and we'll see you later